Welcome to the Virginia Quilt Museum. We hope that you all are staying safe and healthy during this time. Today we are going to introduce you to some of the quilts in our collection. We hope that you enjoy this virtual quilt turning. This is the Faulkner Crossed Laurel Leaves. It was made in 1840. It was made by Julie F. Faulkner before her marriage with Isaac Hamilton Faulkner. This quilt is the product of the custom of the family providing a dowry. As they were of Germanic origin, they believed that the bride would bring linens and bedding to her home and that the groom would provide the house and the furniture. This aligned with social expectations of work and gender in that time period. This quilt was made entirely by hand with lovely applique work on the 20 blocks that make up the pattern. Block style quilts were a major shift in style for quilters around this time period. It is only until the 1840s that quilts made up of blocks had become popular. This can be attributed to changes as a result of technological innovation, particularly the Industrial Revolution's role in dramatically changing textile production. Before industrialization, fabric was typically hand-spun and woven by women for their households. By the 1840s, commercially made fabrics had become affordable to most families. Are these fabrics include a large variety of cotton prints which were bought for clothes making and quilting alike. This is a fish shaped crazy quilt circa 1885. It's a piano cover in the shape of a fish. This quilt is one of the more unique creations of the museum. Lucinda Rice, the maker of the quilt, was an eyewitness to the Battle of Newmarket in 1864. Her accounts of the conflict detailed the experiences of a home in the line of fire. Interactions between her family with both Union and Confederate armies reveal how civilian homes were often used as stations where soldiers on either side would demand shelter, food, and medical care. These accounts also reveal the way that women in these situations were often treated and the fears and concerns they experienced during the war. Men on both sides of the conflict demanded that she provide them with meals and a place to rest. Lucinda and other women like her also experienced physical assaults by soldiers on the other side. Though she was able to fight back both physically and verbally, she was often at a disadvantage. While Lucinda's account of the battle may seem biased in favor of the Confederate Army, in descriptions of the soldiers' manner and behavior, it is also important to note that both Confederate and Union soldiers were complicit and demanding services from the Rice household. Furthermore, while Lucinda is vocal about her disdain for the quote-unquote Yankees, she provided aid to wounded Union soldiers. Lucinda's accounts ultimately reveal the conflict as seen through a female civilian perspective. While it was decidedly an ideological conflict that pitted the new United States against itself, it was not a clearly defined series of battles that began and ended on the battlefield. With crazy quilts, uh, you will often see uh, materials that are shattering, and that is where the material is disintegrating. That's because during that time period, fabrics were dyed with iron to make them heavier because fabric was sold by the pound instead of by the yard. This iron makes them disintegrate quicker, which is why so many crazy quilts have the issues that you see uh, like this quilt. This is our community resolution quilt. It was made in 1996-97. Every year, the city of Harrisonburg welcomes the new year with its first night celebration on December 31st. In 1996, the theme of this celebration was the diversity of the community, and the Virginia Quilt Museum sponsored the making of a resolution quilt. First night is centered around the Rockingham County uh, Courthouse Square. The light strips in this pattern provided space in which attendees could sign their names and write their resolutions for the new year. This quilt was assembled and tied during the following year. On New Year's Eve 1997, it was displayed at the museum. Many of the original signers would return to see the completed quilt and to recall if they had kept their resolutions that year. Even in today's society, quilts still retain their ability as a way to bring a community closer together. In today's pandemic, this quilt shows that even though we are all different, we are all in this together and we will come out stronger than before. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. We hope that you enjoyed these quilts that we shared with you today. 
I hope that um, that you all will continue to watch our our website and our social media accounts. We have lots of new and interesting things coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, several techniques coming that we're going to share with you, and um, more quilt turnings are coming as well. Um, if you haven't renewed your memberships, please go ahead and do that today. And um, we hope that you all stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much.